Welcome to this amazing, never seen before bombastic video. I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm just here to show you how to create color gradients between different shades. With this technique, for example, I've made these tattoos. With this tattoo, I won an award at the tattoo convention in Rome, which was very exciting for me. We have four colors here, red, yellow, blue, and green. Between these colors, we'll create intermediate tones using these shades. It's important to shake the color well before use. Since the design is very small, I only fill the ink caps halfway. When doing so, take care not to let the fine tattoo needles touch the bottom of the ink cap as it might damage them. I fill the colors in the order I'll tattoo the gradient, reducing the chances of making a mistake. For this gradient, I'm using a 13 Magnum Soft Edge 0.3 millimeter needle. It's crucial that the needle has rounded edges to create smooth transitions. I begin with the darkest blue tone. Using the edge of the Magnum needle, I establish the lines in the area where I'm working on the color gradient. While a thin needle would work for this, this video focuses on color transitions between different shades. After dipping into the color, I briefly hold the needle in a cup of distilled water for the initial gradient, diluting the color for a softer transition. Here I'm tattooing using the pendulum shading technique. It's essential to go in and out softly. However, this technique alone isn't sufficient for the design, more on that shortly. To keep the video concise and informative, I'm editing out wiping off excess ink. Besides the pendulum shading technique, I'm also using the filling technique to create solid areas, evenly working the color into the skin with small, consistent circular motions. Normally, I'd use a thin needle for edges and the magnum for larger, easily accessible areas. However, since this video is about color gradients and not perfect edges, I'm omitting the step with the thin needle. My loyal subscribers already know this, but I have to reiterate it because some viewers may only watch this video. It's crucial not to overwork the skin. Synthetic skin uh, absorbs color much worse than real skin, requiring more passes in this case. On real skin, fewer passes would be necessary. We aim for a beautiful end result, so I'll be tattooing over the same area multiple times. I'm working at eight volts, but this can vary depending on the manufacturer. You'll need to experiment to find the best voltage for you. Next in our gradient is green. I'm not tattooing chronologically from bottom to top. Instead, I'm starting with the darkest tones. The reason being, if you tattoo the light colors first and then the dark ones, there's a risk of smearing the color into the open wound, altering the light color tone. In summary, by tattooing the dark tones first and then the light ones, this risk is eliminated. I start again with the filling technique working the two darkest colors into the skin. Once the base is done, I switch techniques, dilute the color with water, and create a softer gradient using the pendulum shading technique. Since we're filming with a macro lens at double magnification, the needle structure is visible. However, this wouldn't be noticeable on real skin to the human eye. I would be very happy if you subscribe to my channel to support me. Moving on to the next color, red. There are various tattooing techniques and I'm only showing you my approach on this channel. However, it's essential to remain open to alternatives. Every tattoo artist has their own methods. Certain parameters like hygiene or needle depth are consistent, but the approach to achieving the goal can vary greatly. From my experience, I can say you need to be cautious with red ink because many people might be allergic to it. Ideally, an allergy test should be conducted before using colors containing red pigments, such as brown or orange, to prevent complications. After the darkest tones, I move to the intermediate shade, light blue. It should ideally be turquoise, but I didn't have that available.
When you mix blue and green, you usually get turquoise, or in our case, light blue. Mixing red and yellow results in an orange hue. While it's possible to tattoo directly from red to yellow, I'm using the natural intermediate shade formed by mixing both colors, such as orange in this instance, to create an even softer gradient. Continuing with the transition between blue and green, I employ the same technique as before. Now on to light green. Before that, let me briefly discuss needle depth and how I set up the needle. The needle depth varies depending on the um, body area and skin type. With practice, you develop a sense of how deep to tattoo, ensuring to approach the correct depth cautiously before going too deep. Additionally, it's crucial that the needle is set far enough from the needle module to work precisely and adjust the depth. Practice makes perfect. To conceal the needle structure on the skin, I prefer using a larger magnum held sideways. As I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the video, for a soft gradient, dip the needle into the color first and then into distilled water to create a smooth transition. And I believe this is the most critical aspect of creating gradients. Also, between each color change, I thoroughly clean the needle to prevent color contamination. The second lightest tone in this case is orange. With lighter tones, it's important to note that the color mixes with blood, making it appear darker or sometimes indistinguishable, like white turning into pink or, in this case, orange appearing red on real skin. There's a risk of overworking an area trying to compensate for this, but it's unnecessary. Trust your process and with time comes experience. Now for the grand finale of this bombastic video, I promised at the beginning, yellow. Yellow is my favorite color, so I'm most excited about this part. Let's talk about types of inks. Some inks are thick and some thin, Personally, I prefer thin inks as they're easier to work into the skin. I can't recommend a specific brand because there have been instances where I loved a color from a brand, then ordered another color from the same brand with a different consistency. Hence, you need to experiment to find what works best for you. If I receive an ink that's too thick, I dilute it with a few drops of, of distilled water to make it usable, albeit with slightly reduced saturation. Of course, it's better to have the perfect consistency ink that can be used directly. I noticed that only 14% of my viewers are women, and I was shocked. I can't comprehend why tattooing seems to be predominantly a male interest, or why mostly men watch my videos with so few women here. To the few women watching, could you please comment and explain why you think this is? I mostly specialize in black and gray tattoos, occasionally doing colored ones. But my studio partner, Nadja, whom I've worked alongside for seven years, primarily does color tattoos. Uh, she recently started her own YouTube channel. If you want to see a true specialist in color tattoos, I'll link her channel in the video description. Head over there show some love, and subscribe to her channel. In my opinion, when it comes to color, she's one of the best, and I've learned so much from her in this area. As a fun insider, she'll also be releasing a tutorial on her channel. That's it for the video. Good luck on your journey.